Haven Arrest Missionary Baptist Church presents Union Gospel Press's Sunday School Lesson Number 3, Sunday, September 15, 2019. The lesson is entitled, A Comfortable Exile. Lesson text comes from Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 25. Related scriptures are Acts 7, 23 through 29. Hebrews 11, 24 through 27, Genesis 15, 13 through 16. Places are Egypt and Midian. The time is 1485 BC. This week's lesson is a good opportunity for you to teach your students about the qualities that God values most in his servants. Emphasize that these qualities tend to be the opposite of the qualities esteemed by the world. Today's aim facts, to see that although Moses may have felt ready to deliver God's people, God needed to teach him humility, patience, and dependence on him alone. Principle, to realize that our own strength is not what God desires from us. What he wants from us is humility, patience, and dependence on him alone. Application, to emphasize to your students that for them to be ready for any good work in service to God, they must first abandon their pride and self-reliance and learn true humility, patience, and full reliance on God. Illustrating the lesson. The illustration depicts how the Lord had to strip Moses of his pride, impatience, and willfulness so that he could become the humble, patient, de dependent deliverer of God's people. Practical points. One, when we respond to evil with evil, we must face the consequences. Exodus 2, 11 through 4. Two, God's love can find us even when we feel lost and alone. Verse 15. Three, even in poor circumstances, we can still find ways to honor God and serve others. Verses 16 through 17. Four, the love of God is manifested in us in the way we treat each other, verses 18 through 20. Five, if we are Christ's, we too are strangers here, verses 22, 21 through 22. Six, God is moved with compassion when his children are in trouble, verse 23. Seven, God always keeps his promises, verses 24 through 25. Golden text. When Pharaoh heard these things, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Exodus 2, 15. Today we have three lesson outlines. The first is Moses in Egypt, coming from Exodus 2, 11 through 15. The second is Moses in Midian, coming from Exodus 2, 16 through 22. And the third is Israel in Egypt, Exodus 2, 23-25. Introduction. Patience, we are often told, is a virtue. The Bible affirms this by stressing the importance of being patient as we wait for the Lord and his promised blessings. Isaiah 40, 31, James 5, 7. An old French proverb succinctly states the value of patience while also highlighting the challenge it presents. Patience is bitter, but its fruit is sweet. Patience has its rewards, but being patient is difficult. Impatience is common to all of us, but perhaps especially to young people. They often want to achieve long-term goals without taking the necessary and often time-consuming steps that would adequately equip them to reach those goals. Biblical figures are no different from us in this respect. Moses is a prime example. We remember him as Israel's godly deliverer, but we often forget that initially he was not willing to wait on God's timing. Moses in Egypt, Exodus 2:11. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew one of his brethren. Verse 12. 
and he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Verse 12. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did wrong, wherefore smitest thy, thou thy fellow? Verse 14. And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Verse 15. Now when Pharaoh heard these things, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Moses acts rashly. Exodus 2, 11-12. The text of Exodus jumps forward a number of years in Moses' life. He was now about 40 years old, Acts 7.23. Stephen's survey of Israel's history in Acts 7 fills in a few of the details of those first 40 years in Moses' life in the Egyptian court. During that time, he was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, first, first 22. Leon Wood noted that, Help, help hatch, hatch up. the daughter of Pharaoh was ra who raised Moses, was intellectually endowed herself and would not have been satisfied with anything less than the finest education for her son. He would have been provided the finest in tutors and his own mental capacity would have been able to absorb all that was taught. His education would have included instruction in the Egyptian and probably Canaanite languages, as well as geography, archery, and horseback riding. All this training made him mighty in words and in deeds, Acts 7.22. God was guiding his education to prepare him for the task ahead. He would one day confront Pharaoh and lead the Israelites forth from Egypt and through the wilderness to Canaan. He was not yet fully prepared for that quest. However, as we learn in these verses, Moses, who was well aware that he was an Israelite, and he was clearly concerned about his people and anxious to relieve their suffering. This is evident from his reaction to seeing an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. It may have been that Moses wanted to see for himself what he had heard about the Egyptians' treatment of the Hebrews. When he saw an example firsthand, he acted impulsively and injudiciously. Moses looked around and seeing no one else, he killed the Egyptian man and hid his body in the sand. He succeeded in delivering his fellow Hebrew from punishment, but his vengeance went further than the Egyptian had gone in beating the Israelite. Moses' act was no doubt well-intentioned, and by it he was clearly siding with his oppressed people, Hebrew 11.25. However, he acted rashly and violently. Moses' act exposed, Exodus 2.13-14. The next day, Moses came across two Israelites fighting with one another. Moses rebuked the one who was in the wrong, asking him why he was striking his Hebrew brother. The man's reply also took the form of a question, actually two questions, and was a rebuke to Moses. Who made thee a prince and a judge over us, he asked. He followed this by asking, Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? Moses surely anticipated that his killing of the Egyptian would be known among the Israelites, for the man he saved would spread the word. So it was not the knowledge of his act, but the action to it that surprised him. This man knew what Moses had done, but was not favorably impressed. Moses probably immediately recognized the man, was also giving voice to what others thought. They did not welcome Moses' newfound conversion from Egyptian to Hebrew identity. They actually resented it. The New Testament book of Acts sheds important light on Moses' thinking. With his previous day's deliverance of the Hebrew 
who was being beaten, Moses supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. But they understood not. Acts 7.25 it seems even at this point, Moses had some understanding of God's plan for him to deliver his people, but he expected them to accept him. But just the opposite was the case. Moses had acted rashly rather than patiently waiting for the Lord to direct his steps. Moses had tried to do things on his own. How, do, how we do things is often as important as what we do. Following the philosophy that the end justifies the means has been the downfall of many people, Christians included. Moses thought killing the Egyptian would secure the respect of the Israelites and cause them to hail him as their long expected deliverer. But his impatience led only to a presumptuous act that had severe consequences. Moses' immediate, Moses' immediate reaction was fear. Surely this thing is known, Exodus 2.14. He said, if, if the Israelites resented him, they would not keep Moses' killing of the Egyptian hidden from the Egyptian authorities. He was a wanted man. Moses, is, Moses flees from, from Egypt, Exodus 2.15. Moses assessed the situation accurately. The Pharaoh soon heard what had happened and sought to slay Moses. The Pharaoh was Tutmos III, who at this time reigned as co-ruler with, with Queen Hatshepsut, the adopted mother of Moses. A short time later, Thutmose III succeeded Hatshepsut and expressed his hatred for her by destroying the representation and the name of up wherever these appeared on monuments in Egypt. The hatred he had for her undoubtedly was extended to Moses as well. Moses therefore fled from Pharaoh far to the east and dwelt in the land of Midian. He sat down by a well, verse 15. Dwelt translates the same Hebrew word as set down. While Moses was settled in that land, at this point he merely sat down there by a well. This marks the translation to the second act in this drama, as the scene moves from Egypt to Midian. Moses in Midian. Verse 16. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Verse 17. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Verse 18. And when they came to Reuel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? Verse 19. And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. Verse 20. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Verse 21. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zephrah his daughter. Verse 22. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. A noble act. Exodus 2, 16 through 17. The boundaries of Midian are uncertain. The Midianites dwelled primarily in northwestern Arabia, but they were nomadic people who also occupied portions of the Sinai, the Sinai Peninsula. The Midianites were descendants of Abraham through Keturah, Genesis 25, 1 through 2. Because of their common ancestry, Moses would have much in common with them. Probably exhausted from his travels, Moses sat down by a well, Exodus 2, 15, in Midian territory. Seven daughters of a priest of Midian came to the well to draw water for their father's flock, verse 16. But their animals were driven away by shepherds who were probably unwilling to wait their turn and pushed ahead of the women. Moses, however, quickly arose and came to the aid of the women and even watered their flock. Moses' response is revealing. He was quick to act against injustice, even when the odds were against him. 
He was physically strong and energetic, and he was generous and helpful to people he hardly knew. Such quantities would serve him well in such qualities would serve him well in his future role as Israel's deliverer. Yet God had things he still needed to teach him while he was in exile in Midian. A favorable report, Exodus 2, 18 through 19. Royal, the father of the seven women, would eventually become Moses' father-in-law. Elsewhere, he is known by the name Jethro. 3-1-18-1. At his first mention, 2-16, he is identified as the priest of, of Midian. It is hard to know exactly what this means, but as a descendant of Abraham, he might well have worshipped the true God, carrying out the priestly function of Melchizedek had, Genesis 14, 18. When his daughters returned from their duties, Ruel was surprised they had come so soon. Apparently, the shepherds had been a constant source of trouble for his daughters. The women reported that an Egyptian had delivered them from the shepherd and then drawn water and watered their flock. They identified the man as an Egyptian, probably because of his attire and Egyptian speech. A gracious invitation, Exodus 2.20. Ruel was anxious to honor the man by inviting him to dinner. In fact, he seemed to be surprised his daughters had not already done so. Such hospitality was the norm though there is no hint Moses was seeking or expecting it. A blessed outcome, Exodus 2, 21 through 22. These verses cover much of Moses' years in Midian in summary fashion. Skipping forward from the dinner invitation in verse 20, they tell us that Moses was content to make his home with Ruel's household. This indicates more than a short-term arrangement in fact, Moses remained with Ruel and worked for him 3-1 and was given Ruel's daughter Zipporah, Zipporah as a wife. The years that followed saw Moses and his wife become the parents of a son who Moses named Gershom. The name itself means expulsion, but when pronounced, it sounds like the combination of two Hebrew words that mean a resident alien there. His name would be a reminder that Moses had been banished from his former land and made a stranger in a strange land, 222. Moses would remain in that strange land of Midian for 40 years, Acts 730. Already 40 years old, verse 23, Moses had many more years of preparation ahead before he would be ready to deliver Israel. He had absorbed the wisdom of Egypt and thought he was ready when he had killed the Egyptian. But this very act testified that there was much still he needed to learn. His years in the wilderness would give him a very different perspective and create a humble, patient servant who was equipped to deliver and lead, God, and lead God's people. Israel in Egypt, verse 23. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Verse 24. And God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and with Jacob. Verse 25. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. The cry of the oppressed, Exodus 2.23. At this point, the scene shifts back to Egypt and reminds us of the size of the task for which God was preparing Moses. The king of Egypt, Thutmose III, died about 35 years after Moses fled the country. By removing the man who had been seeking to take Moses' life, God was preparing the way for Moses' return to Egypt. 4.19. A new pharaoh did not change the situation for the Israelites, however. Their oppression continued and the people were crying out to God for relief. If the Israelites had remembered God's promise in Genesis 15, 13 through 16, they would have been anxiously anticipating their promised deliverance. Their exclusive focus, however, seemed to be on the severity of their plight. 
the response of God, Exodus 2, 24 through 25. God's response to his people's groaning and bondage is described by three terms. First, he heard them. Their prayers were not ignored, but came before the God who is faithful to his people and his promises. Second, God remembered the covenant he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, verse 24. Remembered here does not suggest that God had previously forgotten this. Rather, it indicates faithful love and intervention, Genesis 8, 1. God was determined to act on their behalf because of his covenant faithfulness, which is expressed throughout the Old Testament by the Hebrew word sisit, usually translated as mercy or loving kindness. Psalms 118, 1 through 29, 136, 1 through 26, 63, 3. The covenant mentioned here is the is the covenant originally made with Abraham, Genesis 12, 1 to 3, and then reaffirmed with Isaac, 26, 2 through 5, and later Jacob, 28, 13 through 15. From Jacob, the covenant promises were passed on to his 12 sons, for whom came the 12 tribes of Israel. The Abrahamic covenant promised the Israelites a land of their own, Canaan. Descendants who would become a great nation and divine blessing. The people were certainly numerous, but they were not in the land. Third, God looked upon his people and had respect unto them. Exodus 2.25 These are expressions of loving recognition and acknowledgement. God loved them and was genuinely concerned about their plight. Indeed, he was already well along in the the pro process of preparing the one who would deliver them from bondage. Both Moses and the Israelites were impatient, and we can understand why they were. Like us, however, they could not rush God's timing. Only his timing is perfect. He is always faithful to his people and his promises. Questions 1. What did Moses' education in Egypt involve? 2. How did Moses respond when he saw an Egyptian being beaten, when he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew? Three, how did Moses expect the Israelites to respond to what he did? Why? Four, why did he flee from Egypt? Where did he go? Five, who were the Midianites and where did they live? Six, what did Moses do on behalf of the seven women? What did his actions reveal about him? Seven, who were the father of the women and what did he do for Moses? Eight, what did Moses name his first son and why? Nine, what was the Israelite situation back in Egypt? Ten, what is meant by God's remembering his covenant? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, September 15, 2019. Thank you for listening. God bless.